Hey, this is Kevin Tofel with JK on the Run, and earlier last week I showed you that I had a Lenovo S10 netbook under review. What I didn't share with you at the time was that this actually did not come from Lenovo. This has come from Phoenix, the folks who make the BIOS that power a large majority of computers these days. The BIOS is the basic input-output system. It's the first thing that you see when the computer starts up before you actually get into the operating system. So why would Phoenix be sending me a Lenovo S10 for review? I'm going to show you right now. It has to do with something called hyperspace. We've talked about it before, but basically it is a separate partition that uh, before your computer boots up will actually run so that way you have instant access to certain things like the web, wireless connections, uh, email, Facebook, uh, instant messaging, Skype, and so on. Let's take a look and see how it works and then we'll talk about why you might want this. Okay, so let's take a quick look at the Lenovo S10 with the Phoenix Hyperspace. I'm going to turn this on. Actually bring it a little bit closer so you can see the screen. There's your splash screen, and now if I were to hit F4, it would go right into Windows. But by default, this is set up to start with the Phoenix Hyperspace partition. So it's now booting this up. The initial boot isn't super, super fast, but this is a a build that's not quite optimized yet. There are some features and functions that don't work. You'll notice that a Mozilla-based web browser loads up immediately, and it says it's waiting for the network. The page will reload automatically when the network is up. So I have this set to connect automatically to my Wi-Fi network, and there it's actually online. I can now go pretty darn quick. Let's go to JK on the run real quick. So you can see I've got connectivity. There we go. What you'll notice is the browser takes up the vast majority of the screen, and on the right-hand side, let's see if I can zoom in for a little bit here. I haven't done much zooming with this camera. I'm sorry, on the left-hand side, I should say. I said right. Um, we've got our Wi-Fi indicator, which shows that I'm connected. We've got a battery meter. We've got sound. And then you've got various icons here. It's a scrollable little panel. So I can go to Facebook, Flickr, uh, the Weather Channel, Orbits, My Documents, etc. Now, uh, at the moment, you cannot configure these, but that is just with this build. They are working on that, and that's what the Phoenix folks tell me. But you can see, very quickly, you get into a web browser right away, and the connectivity is extremely fast. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually put this into a sleep mode for a second. By right-clicking on power and saying sleep, I think I can do it with the power button as well. But it is now off. From the time I hit that till the time it went into sleep mode, I would say it was probably about a second. The nice thing here is that both when it's running and when it's sleeping, it's extremely power efficient. There's no power management actually in this build that I have, but this is a pre-build. And they say, Phoenix claims, that you'll be able to get 24, I'm sorry, 25% more battery runtime when you use this over some of the Windows-based applications on the Windows partition. So let's see how quickly it comes back up and how quickly it reestablishes the connection. And we're back, and the Wi-Fi is already lit. And just to test that, I will click the post, and you can see it's reloading. That's the full post, so I went to a new page. That's pretty darn quick. Now what they also say, and this is, I thought, pretty cool, that you can even, let me go to our videos for a second, you can even watch a YouTube video and go into sleep mode, come back, and it will keep your place as well as it will, get rid of that, it will keep your place as well as um, restore the connection very quickly and continue on in the YouTube video. Mouse pad's a little bit sensitive, more so sensitive in the hyperspace than when I'm using Windows. Um, not sure why that is, but that was told to me that this would happen, and it is something they are working on. So let me go back to the videos. There we go. All right. What we'll do is we'll actually test the theory here about watching a YouTube video and shutting the machine lid and see what happens. Okay. There we go. Hey, Kevin. How you doing? Not too bad. I'm still catching up.
Got some buffering going on here. Okay, I'm going to shut this. Just shut the lid. Okay. Now the device itself should be sleeping. When I bring it back. Actually, it looks like it doesn't even go into a sleep mode. It may be a low power state. But it's still going, it's half buffered. It's actually quite neat. I think they, they do have to do a little bit of work on this. And again, this is a pre-build, so this is just to give you a feel for what's going to happen. Pause that. Okay, or actually close the browser or go back. Now, again, these panel items on the left, you cannot configure them yet, but they are working on that. You'll also notice you've got a Windows button here. So I'm going to click it. It says, do you want to shut down hyperspace and boot into Windows? I'm going to say yes. And in this pre-build, I actually do have to hit that F4 key, or it will go back into hyperspace. Normally, you will not have to do that. So now it's going to boot into Windows. While it's booting into Windows, let me just explain. There are two different versions of this. This is called Hyperspace Dual meaning you can be in either the hyperspace section or you can be in Windows. They also have, and they, I have another unit, let me get the actual name so I don't goof this up, hyperspace hybrid, which will let you run both at the same time to, to a degree. Um, you can switch back and forth, uh, use the low power hyperspace partition when needed. Looks like that will be coming in, coming in handy. And this is just your standard Windows, obviously. Nothing fancy here. You've seen this before for many, many years. I have noticed that once I boot into Windows um, and I go back into hyperspace, because you can be in one or the other, you can't really be in both at the same time, it seems as though it's running Windows maybe in the background or has it preloaded in memory because I've seen it come back much faster, almost like it's uh, resuming Windows as opposed to fully booting into Windows. So that's something we'll want to watch for once this finally becomes available as well. All right, we can just close that down. Turn it off. If I hit restart, what it should do, actually the way it's configured is go right back into hyperspace. So I can see this coming in handy if you're running hyperspace all the time. The dual mode seems to be more for um, a lower powered solution like a netbook. The hybrid mode seems to be geared towards, at least my take on it, will be on a standard notebook from Phoenix. And what's going to be really interesting, we're going to talk about this in a minute, is that they are going to offer this available to download. So you will be able to either, I assume, purchase a netbook or notebook with this technology, or you can add it to your own. So let me get into the details of that in a minute. We'll just watch this thing start up again. I'll let it go right back into hyperspace. And again, you'll see how quickly it gets that Wi-Fi connection that's going to be up at the top left. So let's see if I can catch that. The browser is being launched. Searching for the network. It's not connected. It is now connecting to a wired network. Well, that's not true because it's not wired. Wi-Fi. There we go. And we've got our 54 meg per second network. What I do like about this also is that they will support 3G cards. So if you noticed, I don't know if you could make it out, there was a, a GSM logo on the wireless network connection. Um, so they're expanding their list of what 3G cards they support. And we will see if we can get a list of those. I know if I go into the settings, there is a control panel where I can configure the network, the system info, the power, date, and time. In this build, the functions are not available to me. So uh, I can't really look into that too, too much. One thing I would love to see, and again, maybe this will come about on the full build, that is the ability to have this panel hide. I'd love to see the entire screen be taken up by the browser so I can get online, check my email, watch videos, etc. and just perhaps have that pop up in and out uh, kind of floating like the tip perhaps in Windows Vista or um, the tablet edition of Windows XP. So anyway, 
that's a quick look at the pre-build and let me get back here in front of the camera and just wrap up with a few little tidbits. So that's a quick overview of Phoenix Hyperspace and even though everything is not quite working yet on this pre-build, you can kind of see where Phoenix is going with this. You also note that Lenovo actually has the splash top system which is very similar to this from Device VM and that's included on the Lenovo S10e. Um, that's you know specific to Le Lenovo's device and I showed the Phoenix Hyperspace on a Lenovo device but what's interesting about this is as I said this will actually be available for download. Uh, the pricing that I have according to the Phoenix folks right now is that it will be $39.95 for what I have showed you here which is the Hyperspace uh, dual mode. I believe that's dual, yes. And it's $39.95 but that is for an annual license. They will cut you a deal on a three-year license for $99.95. I'm not sure about this pricing plan, especially for devices that, you know, the technology changes so fast that, you know, you may only have the device for one to two years. So three years, I'm not sure. <clears throat> now for the, the um, hybrid mode, which is the one that I did not show, but it offers the functionality that you can simultaneously, or not simultaneously, but you can flip back and forth between the two environments, that's actually $99.95 uh, for a license, and that is for, I, I apologize, it's $59.95, I'm reading it on my screen because I just got the information, $59.95 a year, and for three years it's $149.95, so let me recap that since I kind of hose it all up. For the Hyperspace Dual, which is what I showed you, which you can be in one environment, either Hyperspace or Windows, it's $39.95 a year, or uh, $99.95 for a three-year license. For the hyperspace hybrid, which allows you to flip back and forth, that is $59.95 for an annual license or $149.95 for the three years. Again, that pricing model, I'm not so sure. For me personally, probably not compelling, uh, at least the three-year deal, and I'm not sure how much value this adds uh, at either $40 or $60. I'd have to think about that. Instant on is very nice, or nearly instant on. Uh, low power, extra 25% perhaps of runtime. Yeah, that's compelling too. And if you think about it that way, you know, what do you pay for an extended battery? You know, you might want to compare that. In any case, I like the innovation that's being shown here. It uh, allows us to get moving quickly when we're mobile, allows us to have the batteries last longer. It's quick and easy to use. So I do like what I see there. I suspect we'll see even more types of solutions like this. We've got Splash Top now, we've got Phoenix Hyperspace. Um, who knows, there could be another player in the, in the space and maybe that'll even do something with the pricing, I don't know. So in any case, I wanna thank the folks from Phoenix for uh, allowing me to use this on both the Lenovo S10 as well as another Lenovo device that they have offered to let me look at. And uh, all in all, I like what I saw so far. I'm very interested in seeing how it really pans out after this build. I want to see this become a little more mature uh, and we'll see how that works. Thanks for watching everybody. Bye.